to the presentation before this, I am not talking again. Um, but I like being in front of a microphone, as you probably can tell. So I'm going to introduce, even though he's also going to introduce himself afterwards, I'll spoiler, um, a, a good friend of mine, symphony core contributor, probably like the number two symphony guy. So if you, if you need something done in symphony, if you don't like something in symphony, if you guys barricade the doors after the talk, uh, you can sort of force him to do whatever you want. He's also probably one of the smartest developers I've met. I'm really lucky that we have him in the Symphony community. Um, he does the stuff that I can't figure out how to do, uh, and then I do the easy stuff like documentation. So, um, yeah, so here is uh, Nicholas Grekus, and I'll, I'll leave it to him. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so, uh, my name is Nicola Grecas. I'm Symphony Core team member since two years. Uh, I work also for Blackfire as a CTO. Um, and I do open source since years. So, maybe you know JSquiz, which is a JavaScript minifier I wrote in 2003. Um, Patchwork UTF 8 also, uh, which is uh, now today uh, renamed Embedded in a new project, which is Symphony Polyfill, that provides many polyfills for PHP. Um, I'm also known by my um, co-workers as someone who, wrote, who writes some cryptic code. So an example is here, <laughs> just for fun. It's Unicode, so Patchwork UTF-8. Unicode mixed with PHP. As you can see, it's, we're able in PHP to write single, single character uh, um, variables using combining Unicode characters. So this is a dollar with a combining car. It's legal PHP. You can run it for fun. Um, <laughs> so quickly, this is a screenshot of Blackfire. Blackfire is a profiler. And that's the only thing I'll tell you about Blackfire. It's not the topic today. Um, today, we're going to talk about debugging fluency. The goal today is to empower you into uh, using tools so that you won't get this white page uh, again and so that you can know how to get out of this white page. Um, so the fatal error and any other nightmare debugging you might end up uh, into. Um, so what is debugging? Um, why dumping is linked to debugging, of course. Um, the first thing is uh, we need tools for fixing trivial errors. Trivial means uh, that can be detected by the PHP engine. That's a trivial error. Um, then, when PHP um, says that everything is right, you have a behavior that might be wrong, and of very often it's not right at the first um, version, so you need tools to figure out what's the behavior and how to fix it. And, of course, this starts with understanding what's going on, which means representing states, because we deal with states. Um, in the first part, I'd like to um, remind you how PHP works and how errors work in PHP. So uh, errors in PHP are, um, have yeah, several levels. One is the warning level, the notice level, and deprecation. These are kind of notices. Um, I'm sure you already saw many of them, uh, some uh, undefined index, some fopen with a permission file system uh, issue. Um, these are not important issues that um, allow, they don't break uh, the PHP engine. You just get a notice and you can continue. But uh, usually it may be an issue that you have to fix and PHP is telling there might be something wrong. Then we have an intermediate level, which, is the, which are the user errors and the recoverable errors. I'll tell you just after why they are special. Then uh, we have the fatal errors. So the parse error, you know that, I'm sure. Uh, the indefined function and undefined class, undefined method. So whenever you have t a typo, you miss some use statement at the beginning of your file. Um, a type error, so type error is when you uh, call a, a function with an array, but the function is expecting some object. You get this kind of fatal error. 
And the last one is the uh, most horrible one. It's the out of memory <coughs> error. And in this case, it's really, really hard to debug things. And et cetera, because I'm sure you'll find many ways to trigger bugs there. <laughs> um, so PHP triggers this kind of errors and PHP gives you, gives us a hook which is set error handler with a callback. If you register a callback using this function, you will get the callback called whenever any of this function of these notices are triggered. Any of these means the first two warnings, notices, deprecation, user errors, and recoverable errors. These are the only kind of errors that you can catch uh, with the set error handler in PHP. And it's really useful because you can just plug what you want at this place. So what people do usually, what Drupal do, what Symfony does, uh, is um, logging because after that you can just read the log file and say, okay, I have something to fix. Um, the function is also able to sniff to read the error reporting level um, at the current moment of the call triggering uh, call time. This means that you can detect and the callback can detect whenever a function is called and a, a notice is triggered um, using the silencing operator. So you know maybe you've uh, read about this at uh, thing which uh, changes locally the error reporting level to zero. So if you call error reporting into the callback function, you can uh, read its return value, which if it's zero, most function, most callback, just ignore and return right now. But when it's not zero, it means it's not silent, so you can do something with that. At least the developer wants something to want to know about that. Um, user errors and recoverable errors are fatal when you do not plug a custom uh, error handler. So that's the behavior of PHP. But if you plug one, um, you can do something else. Um, then we have the other kind of errors, the fatal errors. And PHP allows us also to have some information but then code against uh, coaching uh, this. So pass errors, undefined class, type errors, out of memories uh, situation, uh, trigger the end of the PHP engine. And by the end of the PHP engine, it means uh, PHP goes straight to the shutdown function. So we still have user learned code that can be run at this stage. And uh, whenever you register shutdown function, some callback, this callback, will be called if a fatal error is happening during your script execution. Of course, you can do many things in shutdown functions, cleaning many things, but it's also a hack, and it's really great that PHP is so hackable that you can get fatal errors and still deal with them and do something. Um, so typically, what this kind of callback, shutdown callback do is um, calling error get last, which is a function that returns an array that contains the error message, the phi, the line, and the level uh, of the last error. In this case, it's, of course, the fatal error. Then we have another kind of errors, which are exceptions. Of course, exceptions have a very different handling mechanism, and it's the, the try-catch block. So try catch some exception, um, and do something with that. Um, usually, user learn code deal with them um, if they are expecting and if are able to deal with not, uh, usually not every exception, I mean the, the slash exception in the root namespace, but usually libraries deal with their, with their own uh, namespace of exceptions and are able to catch and deal with them properly. Whenever a try catch block uh, is missing or a try catch block is um, not catching some kind of exception. Um, and whenever this exception g pops up uh, to the root, uh, so out of the call stack, the set, 
the, some exception handler can be called, and it has to be registered before that with set exception handler. So it's kind of set error handler, so, but the, in this case, it's um, a callback that will be called whenever an exception is triggered and is not uh, caught. So of course, the signature of this callback is just a function that takes one argument, which is the exception. Um, with PHP 7, uh, we have a new kind of exceptions, uh, which are throwables and errors. So it's a new kind of object, and throwable is an interface, and error is a class, and um, exception, the class, is an instance of implements the throwable exception, error implements also the throwable exception, but an error is not an exception, which means that code that uses the previous one, this kind of code, won't catch the error. The error uh, will get uh, out of the try-catch block and pop, and if you don't deal with them, and most code do not deal with them because most code are not PHP 7 aware, uh, then the error will get up to the exception handler. This time it's the same name, it's the same callback, so the same callback will be called both for errors and exception. At least it could be renamed set throwable handler, but because of backward compatibility concern, they did not do that. Um, some code uh, used to um, have a type hint on the exception uh, argument of the callback. Of course, PHP 7 broke that because if you type in with backslash exception and you get an error there, you'll get a fatal error. Okay, so another kind of error, and now we are in the daily process. Um, I'm sure daily, maybe not daily, but uh, very often, at least for me, uh, we do typos, and uh, we do character case mistakes. So when you write your class name, you miss the uppercase C, the uppercase first letter. Um, so these are um, usual errors that can be um, worked with in the autoloader. So for that, a, a trick we use, and uh, I will present you, is to decorate all autoloader, all functions that load your classes, and by decorating them, uh, we can add checks, and checks that verify that everything is good, and um, I'll show you, <laughs> you'll see. Um, an example is this one, so the last one is um, you can get a message saying, uh, calling, you're calling undefined uh, method foo. And um, by looking at the message, you can know that the class is bar. So the message says the calling undefined method bar uh, on class, uh, call method foo on class bar. Um, and in this case, we can hook, hook into this and say, okay, um, let's inspect by reflection the bar class and look at all the existing method and by Levenstein distance um, say, okay, the, this must be a typo and the likely uh, good method is this one. And then you, we can have a um, very user-friendly error message suggesting the correct version of the method in this case. Um, so that's for general uh, error lifecycle in PHP. Now, uh, let's see quickly what happens in, let's start with Drupal. So in Drupal, by default, notices, PHP notices and PHP warnings are just logged. Um, the error handler and the exception handler, if you look at their implementation, they just call the logger that is inside of Drupal. So um, by looking at the log, you'll see just the error and the, the notices, the warning that happened. Um, and code exception, trigger the kernel.exception event. So this means that the core of Drupal, and in fact the core of the Symfony kernel, has a try-catch block, and the try-catch catches exceptions, and this exception is forwarded to an exception to the event dispatcher, and the event dispatcher triggers this kernel exception event. And I think the default is to cast the exception to a string, so just displaying its message and the stack trace, and then return a response with this body content. So that you have 
I'm sure uh, seen this page, which is quite white with the exception message and the stack trace behind. Um, in Symfony, as so also in Drupal, the PHP 7 error throwables um, are not catched by caught by um, the kernel class. It's not we don't deal with them in Symfony, so they end up calling the set exception handler callback, and um, the default one is calling the logger, same as before. In Symfony, we have kind of different defaults. Um, notices and warnings are converted to exceptions. This means that if you use some undefined variable in your Symfony code, you'll get an exception, so you will have to fix it to continue developing your controller or anything. In Drupal, it's not the case, and so it means you kind of have uh, undefined index, undefined variables, things like that, and PHP can deal with that, and it won't tell you anything except in the log, and execution will continue, so that's another way to develop. Um, Uncut exception trigger the kernel exception event that the same uh, wiring system. Um, PHP 7 errors, same thing. And there's difference because um, whenever some uncode exceptions end up in the error handler, in the exception handler, then um, they are re-injected into the kernel, which is something Drupal does not uh, right now. But by having this, we are able in Symfony to take fatal errors and um, deal with them as if they were exceptions, which is really useful because we can then reuse all the nice displaying tools that we have for exceptions, <coughs> tools and logging. Um, and we have, about logging, we have an, another option, which is uh, to log all errors, even the silenced one. Um, because it's really um, useful to know what's happening just in your application. And just because some developer added an at scene before some F open call or something like that, doesn't mean that there is anything to look at there. And maybe the bug you're looking for is just silenced by that. So what we do is we log it. Of course, we can't trigger an exception. We don't want to break the code at this stage. But if you look at those logs, you can have more information. And you have full information, in fact. Um, with these settings. Okay, so um, Symfony, as you know, has several components. Uh, one of them is the, is the debug component. The debug component is already in Drupal 8, but it's not used. It's already in Drupal, Drupal 8 because it's a dependency of the HTTP kernel component, which is used by Drupal, which means you don't have to do anything to use it, only write code. Um, what this component does is um, it takes all the PHP uh, error levels, and whenever one is triggered, it just map these notices, warnings, anything, to the PSR3 uh, logging system. So um, do you know PSR3? Yeah, who knows? Okay, so um, PSR3, so the PSR are uh, uh, PHP standard uh, recommendations, which are standards um, that are used by Symfony, by Drupal, and by many other projects to def with um, that define interfaces. And one is the PSR3, which defines uh, some interfaces uh, to log, to log any message. So there is a method that is called log, another one which is called warning, another one which is debug, so it depends on the level. You have several methods, one per level. And what this does is it takes a PHP error and it, ma it maps that to uh, a logging level error, which allows them to reuse any logging system that is a P PSR3 st um, standard. Another thing uh, that is done by the uh, debug component um, is converting PHP errors into exceptions. I told you about that because this is what Symfony is using by default. So any um, error is converted to an exception. This is um, an option. So you can configure and get logging or throwing because just before I told you there's mapping, when you can map, of course, 
PHP errors to exceptions, which means no logging because you have the exception. There's no need to log that. Um, the error handler mechanism of PHP allows you to have access to local verse, to the local scope, um, and so it means local variables that were defined at the time the error was triggered. So with the error handler, we are able to get them and log them and put them in the exception what you want so that you can know what were the states in the local method that triggered the exception, triggered the message. Um, with a stack trace also. So you have the message and you know how uh, PHP ended up in this situation. Um, we have unsilence configuration uh, to tell to the logger or to the debug component which error should not be silenced. I told you already about that and we use it in Symfony. And it's able to turn fatal errors into exceptions. So this is done, you know now how to do that. You register a shutdown function, and in the shutdown function you get, you call error get last, and with a returning array, you do something <laughs> like in instantiating an exception and forwarding it to something else, somewhere else. Um, especially you can re-inject it into the logging system. So that's the job of the error handler. Uh, we have another utility class, which is the exception handler. The exception handler uh, has a job, which is to generate HTML um, with, by taking just an exception instance as argument. You do um, a exception handler, handle exception, and it displays this kind of HTML pages. The other thing, um, the other useful class is the debug class loader. Uh, so the debug class loader uh, has three main um, use cases. One is to stack compile, compile time errors. So this is really an edge case in PHP um, where some errors um, can't be logged properly at some stage, uh, which, which is at some compiling stage, in fact. So you don't have to know full details about that, but the debug class loader allows um, you to not end up in the trap uh, which exists in PHP, which is this one. Um, another um, feature is to force unsilencing of past errors. I'm sure, or at least I did, uh, one day have a white page without any error message, and this was because after several hours, this was because of some at scene in front of an include. So the ad scene set uh, says um, just don't log any error. This is really, really bad when you have some parse error, some fatal error in the include in the full PHP file because you have the error, you said to not log it, so you don't have, you have the A closed and you can deal with that. So what the debug class loader does is that it changes locally the error reporting level and it forces past errors and some other kind of errors to be unsilenced so that you will get them and you'll see them. And I'm sure you never want to silence them. Um, another um, example, and maybe the last feature um, of the debug class loader, is uh, sniffing and trying to um, find case mismatch um, between loaded uh, declared class names and the file name in which you put your class declaration. On Linux, uh, this doesn't matter very much because on Linux we have a case sensitive file system. So whenever you do some typo, you will get a fatal error saying, okay. But I'm sure many of you have um, Mac OS and Mac OS has a case insensitive file system and Windows also have a case insensitive file system. And uh, we added this to the debug component because one day one of our developers uh, wrote something and we pushed it to prod and we broke the prod because he was on Mac and he, had a, he has a typo. So now, uh, fortunately, we have this and this is able to check that this won't happen again. <laughs> it won't happen again to you also. <laughs> now, so case mismatch between loaded and declared class names trying to autoload a class with an invalid name, this is really a raw edge case. Fine, the file was found, but the class was not in it. So 
You look for foo.php, we find foo.php, we load foo.php, but there is no foo class in foo.php. What does that mean? Uh, so maybe you're missing the namespace, something like that. And then we also have the case with case mismatch between class and file name. Um, a last feature is um, that the debug class loader is able to uh, inspect the method that you're calling, the class that you're calling, and the interface that you're using in your code, and it's able to warn you by just adding a message in the log system, to warn you about deprecated um, interfaces, abstract classes that you are using. Um, this may be not useful right now, but one day you will have legacy code, and one day this code will be deprecated by the main author, um, the, so the, some library, and so you will know how to fix your code because the code will tell you, this is deprecated, you should use that now. Okay, let's change component. This is the second component. So the var jumper component is about displaying um, the state of any uh, variable. So the mission statement of the component is to generate some easy to read HTML or common line output. The second um, feature mission of the component is to provide an accurate, very accurate state representation of any variable, an array, a float, an int. We don't want to represent one and 1.0 in the same way so that you can know that this is a float, this is an int, and you have the hint to understand the very accurate state of any PHP variable. PHP proof. Uh, this is also very important because PHP is full of edge cases. And when you are debugging, you are in an edge case, usually. So it means that the component um, is not allowed to break and we try very hard to test it in every crazy situation so that you can dump, dump in any situation. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, we want it to be extensible and reusable, which means that uh, I will present you the component and you will see it from the outside. And the outside is one feature to represent the state, so to dump. It's just a var dump replacement. And Internally, it's um, an API and interfaces and the classes that allow you to um, just build something else on top of the core algorithm and core interfaces so that you can extend it and provide some other representation, anything you want to build uh, on top of that. Okay, um, let's uh, do some examples. So um, this is a simple array. So very easy to understand, I guess. So we have five elements, a simple string in an array of five elements, <laughs> a float, an integer, a boolean, an empty array. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is a kind of complex array. So this array has internal references, which means that some indexes are just aliases to other indexes. And in this case, um, we have the index zero, index one, and they both, they both hold the same value, but in fact, not because that the same two are two different position, because it's the same position. Both index are reference of each other, which means that if you change index one, you will change index zero. Uh, so this is displayed with this uh, A, uh, the ampersand one, and uh, we have the same representation just for an array, so in, in um, index two, index three, we also have the uh, an alias, and in this case, we put an array there. So you can see that we open the first one and we collapse the, the last one. So this is something that you cannot know currently with tools, displaying tools, and sometimes you will have a bug. One day you will have a bug, and the bug will be related to this, and you will need the tool to see what's the data structure that you're using, or maybe someone made you, you to use. Uh, this is a simple object. So a simple object has a, one public property, um, so with a plus prefix, so plus uh, means public, the sharp prefix protected property, and the dash prefix for private properties. Um, this uh, plus sharp and dash is a convention that is used in UML, so 
if people, uh, some of you are used to that, you should be familiar with that. We could have invented something else, but we shouldn't. When there is a standard, it's better to make everyone aware of it and so that people raise their knowledge. Um, okay, so let's talk about um, internal things. So how does this work? We have a variable, which is dollar um, First, the first step to get this kind of representation is to take a var cloner object, which is something that is implemented in the var jumper component, and uh, to use it on our var um, variable. Uh, the output of this call, which is, the, there is a method which is called uh, clone var. So whenever we do a cloner clone var of vars, then we get back a data object. A data object is again some internal thing, and it's representing the exact state of the var variable, but it's not the var variable anymore, it's something else. Um, then what the var cloner does inside, internally, is that it uses casters uh, to um, extract accurate representation about um, all your custom objects. So this means that if you're using Doctrine and you don't want your entities to, dump, to be dumped with the entity manager, which is a very huge object, then you can write a caster and the caster will have some implementation saying, okay, this is an entity. I don't want the entity manager to be dumped because I don't care about it. Let's remove it from the, rep from the representation and then represent it. Um, and what the var cloner also does is that it enforce uh, state extraction limits. This just means that we can have a max level, have a max items, max string length, so that you don't dump the full PHP state, but you can limit your representation to the first levels, uh, nesting levels of your uh, objects. So um, the resulting data object from the cloning of the var uh, variable is basically internally just a simple PHP array that holds full precision uh, over the state of the initial var, which means that uh, it's just, um, if you remove all the limits, it's an exact representation of the variable that you, we are going to dump. And you can serialize it and put it on a file. You can store this object in a database, do something else with it, uh, forward it to some remote server, it has the state, and you will be able to represent it later in the process if you want. So there is a separation between extracting the state, which generate this, and then dumping, representing this thing. So then um, this is done, this job representation is done by what we call a dumper object. So we have two, a CLI dumper, so command line dumper, an HTML dumper, maybe your dumper, uh, you can write one. Um, and this one turns uh, the data object into a string representation. A string representation is what is displayed on uh, your screen, so HTML command line thing. Um, and then the, this string representation is written to any PHP stream or any line callback. So you can uh, hook into this and say, okay, I don't want this to be printed on the standard output on the output of my web page. I want this to be output somewhere else, maybe in a file, maybe on uh, the standard error stream, maybe on the network protocol stream, maybe on some callback. So a callback will be called for every line that is gener generated for the representation. So that you can do anything, any wiring you want with the output. Uh, so this is another example. This is a comp what I call a complex object. Uh, why is it complex? Because it's, so in this case, it's a Redis object. So Redis is a database, and a Redis object is a um, PHP uh, driver implementation that is able to connect to Redis, the same kind of, it's, it's a database connection, Redis database connection object. And uh, usually, this is provided by the Redis uh, PHP extension, and if you dump this using Vardum, for example, or using printer, you will get only the first line. The, f the first line will tell you, okay, this is a Redis object, and it holds one public uh, property, which is socket, which is a regi Redis socket buffer resource. Um, by using a caster, and this is why I put this example here, 
by using a cluster, you can add useful information um, so that you have more information when you're dumping uh, this object. In this case, we have a Redis connection, and on the Redis object, even if it's not a, an internal property, uh, private or public, um, there is a state. There is a state, and the state can be read by using some is connected method, uh, get host method, get port, get hot, get DB number, get timeout, get persistent ID. So um, if you're working with Redis object, you have to know uh, that you can inspect the state of the Redis object uh, by using these methods. Um, what you can do with uh, the var dumper component is code that knowledge into a caster, and then the caster will just know that for you, and whenever you end up doing dump from some Redis object, you will have this representation. So this representation is Redis aware. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> Uh, this is the implementation. So um, the implementation says basically that um, it's construct, constructing some array, as you can see, and the array calls all the interesting function on the Redis object so that then the representation is generated um, by using this array that is constructed there, okay? So this is just a public static function, which means there's no state, there's no object. It's really simple. If you know, you maybe need to read some documentation about that to know the exact meaning of the arguments. But anyway, as you can see, there is some knowledge here, which is how to access the state of the Redis connection object. And we have many of them, and we add many more uh, over time, because this one is very new. Uh, the previous one was maybe a PostgreSQL um, connection displayer. So yeah, that you, we now have a nicer display for this kind of object and so on. Okay, um, this is the kind of um, code you need to do if you want to dump by hand. So um, this is the implementation of what I tried to explain to you before. Uh, so at link four, we create a cloner, so a new var cloner. Then we create a cli dumper. Um, then we prepare some stream output, so some PHP memory buffer, and uh, let's go. And on line eight, we call cloner clone var of some variable, and then the output of this, the return value, is a data object. We give this data object to dump, dumper dump, and dumper dump will generate the string on the output. That is the last argument there. Uh, then you get the output with stream get content on the output resource, and that's it. You have a variable with the string representation of the, of the, the variable. Okay? <laughs> okay, let's practice. Huh, what time is it? Okay. Um, it's a lot simpler that one. You may have. <laughs> uh, uh, the first thing, um, so Symfony Vardumper is just a standard composer package that you can require. So you do composer require, Symfony Vardumper, and that's it. That's it. It works on Drupal 6, on Drupal 7, Drupal 8, and Symfony on, in fact, any PHP uh, application. This means that uh, when you composer require Symfony Vardumper, you will get automatically a dump function. So then you just dump some variable, dump, and that's it. You get the representation. Uh, this is able to automati automatically switch between HTML or CLI, depending on the runtime context. Uh, you can also install that using Composer Global Require and using also uh, some auto in any setting configuration. If you do Composer Global Require and then auto prepend file in your PHP any file, you will get dump all the time without doing anything on all your project. It, it will be installed globally on your laptop. Okay, let's try. Mm -hmm. So here I have a small Drupal application. Um, okay, so this is standard directory listing. Uh, I have a demo PHP file. Okay, let, it's empty. Can you see it? We'll see, this one is, okay. So, 
we need the autoloader, of course, to load our dependencies. And then let's just dump Okay, one, two, three. That's it. We are not in a Drupal application, we are just in the bare minimum script, PHP script. So uh, we can try any variable here. So of course, an array of stuff. Here's our array. And we can do some Redis connection. Redis, uh, then I have a Redis server running there. So let's connect on local host. Okay. We have a connection object and this is the representation that you saw on the slides, but now it's live. Okay, back. Uh, in a Drupal application, you can use this um, and you can enable uh, everything I told you about by changing your settings local.php files. And if you add this at the end of the file, you will get the debug component uh, enabled so that you'll get error reporting um, in this kind of symphony way. So let's do that. Um, so I think, okay, the Drupal server is there. It's just Drupal server, server running, okay. Um, I have my application there, so, okay, this is a Benyet application. <laughs> um, so the Benyet application has, let's start. Uh, okay, so here is a controller which, okay, it's an usual controller um, for Drupal application. And in this case, let's say I want to up, dump my Benyet. Let's back. I didn't enable the debug component right now. Okay, I'm back to demo time. Okay, so we have an error, undefined variable Benyet. So this is, okay, this is because I plugged, in fact, everything. So this is the error page that I plugged with the dump function so that we dump whenever we have an exception so that we have um, more context and maybe more friendly display. Let's see this one. So in this one, we have, we have some noticing undefined variable uh, burn yet, which obviously has a typo. Um, we have some context, we have a number, we, variable which is called number. Uh, I guess in the code we'll see that there is a number um, variable, and we also have one which is Benyet, which is the one I was trying to dump, and it has a strawberry, it is strawberry field. Can you see uh, there? Maybe I need to zoom? Okay, much better. So let's continue because we have more information there. Uh, we have a stack trace, so the stack trace shows us the list of functions that have been called up to our controller. So if I go back at the end, um, in the main function, which is the abstract root node, and then um, this index PHP file, in fact, is calling Drupal kernel handle, and you know that because you maybe have already opened the index PHP file, and this one is calling the staked, staked HTTP kernel handle, and so on. So this is a typical Drupal call stack. Uh, we end up triggering this exception. Um, with a code excerpt there showing that this is the line that is triggering the exception, okay? And we can inspect and get all the lines and the arguments, so dump, and then we had one argument, which was this one, because we are still in the error handling part, and we can continue and see there that we have, okay. Drupal is doing many things there with Symfony help, and we have many things. Um, so let's fix that, but in fact, we already saw the value, then no need for that. What else? What? 
Okay, so let's see this one up. I don't need this up. I'm in my settings default and then the settings local file. So in this file, I have this, which enables the debug class loader so that whenever I do some typo, I will get the right message. I have the exception handler and I, I have also the error handler. And this is why we're getting this strange error page with the black background um, doing everything. Okay. Um, um, there's also something else we can do. Uh, maybe this is just advanced and this is just to show you that uh, you can also plug everything as you want. Um, in this case, I plot an event subscriber for the kernel exception um, event because I told you that whenever an exception is triggered and is not dealt with by any code, then it will end up in the kernel exception event and this is something you can uh, listen for and in this case, I have one listener. So this is the part, let's forget about this one, about the first lines. So this is the de service declaration for our exception subscribers. So we say whenever uh, you need to, okay, if you need to register the event, let's look at the exception subscriber class. And this one will tell that we'll deal with this. Okay, let's go, where is it? And then we have the class here and the class is just doing this. Up, sorry. So this is the implementation and this is uh, an event subscriber and the event subscriber has a, the bottom function is just a static declaration function saying this class, um, um, the on kernel exception method should be called whenever a kernel exception event is triggered. So that's the last part. And the first part is the function that is called whenever an exception is triggered. And in this case, what we do with the exception, with the event in fact, the beginning is get the exception that is inside the event and just dump it, the same dump function that we used before. And we set the response with a new response, which means blank page because dump already outputted something. So we don't, anything, we don't want anything else, okay? So this will display a very nice page, nice in terms of um, this kind of page. <laughs> um, if we have a few minutes and a few uh, minutes of batteries also, <laughs> well, I, we can write something else, which is some, let's do our D, D for debug, D function. Let's do it together. So I want my D function to output somewhere else. So let's create a cloner. So this will be a new, Var cloner object. Let's do some Cli dumper because you'll see what I want to do later. So we're doing a Cli dumper object. Then, okay, let's forget about indentation because it doesn't work. Um, then let's get our data from the variable. So it's cloner clone var from var. Okay, so now we have the data object and let's dump it. So click dump from our data object and this is where I want something special to happen, which is that I want the output on the standard error of our PHP process. I hope there's no pass error there. Okay. Um, let's use it, use it. So let's D the controller. Nothing there, but here it is. in the log of our web server. 
So we didn't alter the output at all, and we have some uh, console output, even though we are in the HTML context. So what's next? Maybe some native Drupal integration because some wiring are not that easy. Um, maybe a var dumper module. There is one already existing. I tried it. There's still work to do. Um, don't wait after others, uh, which means you can write the code because it's an open source project, and Drupal is, and you already know how to use dump. Just composer requires Symfony var dumper. And happy dump. <laughs> so if you have any question, I'm here. Just come to me. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. Learn a couple things there. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome.